Hello, and welcome to Artfully Told, where we share true stories about meaningful encounters with art. I think artists help people have different perspectives on every aspect of life. All I can do is put my part out into the world. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time. It doesn't have to be perfect ever, really. I mean, as long as you, you're enjoying doing it and you're trying your best, that can be good enough. Art is something that you can experience with your senses and that you just experience as, as so beautiful. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Artfully Told. I'm your host, Lindsay, and I am so very excited to have as my guests today, Sean Kilgore and Natalie Cordon. They are a performing duo that has been producing, writing, and touring around the country for almost a decade, and they are currently the hosts of Live with Cordon and Kilgore, and I am so excited to chat with them about their artistic journeys and what they're up to now. I know their whole focus on is on positivity and wow. light, and I'm just so excited that they're here. So thank you, Sean and Natalie, so much for being here today. Thanks for having us. This is very exciting. We're, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, we're thrilled to be here. Thanks, Lindsay. Of course. And it sounds like we have some guest artists as well. <laughs> yes, I apologize for the for the hounds in the background. It's all good. <laughs> I have two dogs too. They might make a sound appearance at some point as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm not making any promises on my end either. The pup is, he's being good right now, but you just never know. Yeah, you never know when they'll have to defend the house against the UPS driver. You just never know. Exactly. So, well, okay. So I would just love if you two wouldn't mind just sharing a little bit about your backgrounds, maybe how you got into art in general, into your specific fields, how you guys met and, and maybe a little bit about what you're up to now, which is, I know a tall order, but we'll just dive in and I can't wait to hear. Absolutely. Natalie, go ahead. Sure. So my artistic journey actually began in a tutu when I was about three. So I started dancing, in, you know, tap and ballet lessons like most of us did. And I was a dancer up until I was in college, but along the way I joined the theater and became an actor and then didn't find my voice um, as a singer until I was in college, really, which is an odd journey and kind of very different from Sean's. But then I started singing mostly opera and I sang with the Orlando Opera and got my master's degree in acting and became a professional actor right away and started uh, dancing and singing in musicals and along with singing with the opera. And along that journey is when I met Sean. But let's have him tell you a little bit about him before we talk about how we met. For me, I started singing from a very young age, mostly in church, and I was very involved in, in music or through school. But it wasn't really until I was in eighth grade. I was about to be a freshman in high school when my mom took me to see my first uh, big musical. And from the second that it started, I knew exactly that that's what I wanted to do. So I immediately got involved in theater, you know, and in, in musical theater in, in high school. And I continued that on through my college years. That's what I studied, both at a school in Ohio and, and then later at a school in New York City. And then I moved to Florida, South Florida, worked professionally for many, many years in regional theater throughout the state and then moved to Central Florida. And that brings us to where Natalie and I connect. <laughs> oh, it's a good story. So so the, the real story of how we met begins with Sean singing with the Orlando Philharmonic Orchestra. He was doing this fantastic version of Carousel where he played Billy Bigelow. He was the big man on campus and it was a very coveted role and super exciting singing with the full orchestra. And in the midst of it, I was moving back from New York City and we both got cast in a show together. So Sean had been cast in the musical from the beginning and his partner in the show was supposed to be another actress. The show is called Baby. And in the show, our two characters are desperately trying to get pregnant. I think that's a nice way <laughs> of putting nice it. <laughs> so in that show, we spent most of our time in a bed that was our set. And so we got to know each other very closely, very quickly. Yeah, a, lot, <laughs> a lot of intimacy from the day we met. Yeah. And I just thought he was the most wonderful actor. And the only reason why I was cast in the role was that this whole time, the, the storyline is really about how this couple cannot get pregnant. 
and the actress who was supposed to play the role got pregnant. And so she was going to be five months and showing on stage, which would have made absolutely no sense. She's a wonderful actress and it's the only way she could have possibly lost the role. (laughs) And so as I was coming back from New York, the theater called me and asked if I would do the show. And so I was thrilled to get a chance to work with Sean and, and have it be my sort of return to this regional theater that I'd worked at many times. And so we did get on stage and and get pretty close, pretty fast. (laughs) And in the midst of that, I was doing a solo show. And Sean said, you know, would you want to do a cabaret show with me? And I'd done quite a few of them. And I said, yes, I'd love to work with you again. But can we do something even bigger and better than a cabaret? And from there, we put a band together and we got charts and we found that we loved the same kind of music and yeah, so we loved singing together and I couldn't imagine not working with him and having him in my life every day. And so we started creating theatrical concerts and they got really popular pretty quickly. And so we created we created well over a dozen shows at this point and, and we started touring them around the country. So that's how we met. And while we were doing that, we also became, because of Natalie had also done a show with the Orlando Philharmonic, so we had sort of cultivated this relationship with with that local orchestra here. And so we maintained that relationship, and that brought us, once they saw that we were, what we were doing, they invited us to be guest vocalists. So then we would start to appear with the Orlando Philharmonic on a semi-regular basis for Pops concerts and those kinds of things. And, you know, between the, the shows that we were producing and performing and the uh, show with the Philharmonic, their audience members would always come up to us and say that we reminded them of Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) So that led us, or really sort of catapulted us into our next venture, which was creating a tribute show to to those really incredible artists. At the time, you know, we knew who they were. We had heard the names before, not really, you know, very well versed, you know, in their careers though. But now, you know, we have been, that's our longest running show. We've been touring with that show for all, almost eight years now i think that show has played you know from everywhere to las vegas to to miami and so so that show really has sort of been the biggest the the biggest thing that we've that we've been uh focusing on over the past couple of years but it's been great we learned a lot about steve and Edie. they were really incredible entertainers and they both indiv- had incredible individual careers and when they came together for those out there that that remember them know that it was just magic and there was nothing like it so for us to be able to sort of try to recreate that a little bit we're not we're, we're not impersonating them we are we are simply tribute artists we're you know we're we're out there as ourselves singing their music so that is sort of what we that's what led us to this point now where we are now yeah and we're about to do that show again coming up as we come out of everything that's happened recently it's super exciting to get to kick off our season with it And while we were waiting to do that show again is when we started our Live with Cordon and Kilgore show, which is an online show where we are the interviewers and we bring on a different guest every week because we found that what we really wanted to do during this time was just accentuate the positive as much as possible. One of the things that I love about Sean so much, and I think what made us click from the beginning is that we really both like to air on the sunny side of whatever's going on in any situation. And we found that anytime we would jump online and just sing a song or the rare occasions when we got to sing together, people really were resonating with the fact that we were bringing some kind of light and positivity to the world. And we wanted to be able to bring other people in to do the same. So that's when we started our live interview show where we have it kind of like Regis and Kathy Lee back in the day, (laughs) if they were to have sung together, which we do on every show, we get a chance to, to sing together, whether that's old footage of the last 10 years of our shows, or if we get to do it live and in person, and we get to bring on great guests, everyone from artists to dog rescues, to people who are making drinks and bakeries and anything <laughs> that makes us you know feel good, makes and us feel brings good. Us, yep. yeah brings us positivity 
So yeah, that's we, what say we're, our, uh, we say our goal is to accentuate the positive, yeah, yeah. like she like she said every week, and so it's a, it's a nice thing to do. We talk about you know good news stories. We talk about good things that have happened to us. We invite our guests to share you know stories of, of what's happened in their weeks that that might have been positive or good. Yeah, and so we're really enjoying it. So not only so people can join us live for that when we do it live, but it is also available as a podcast currently on Spotify and Stitcher, and hopefully coming soon to all other uh, you know podcast platforms. Wow, that is so cool. I am so enamored with your stories. <laughs> oh my word. And the way that it, they intersected and I just love what you're bringing to the world. I think this is just so cool. And yes, this whole time I've been smiling because what great stories you guys have to share about, you know, how how you all got started and I I resonate with you Natalie about getting started in a little tutu. I started dancing when I was 4, <laughs> but it wasn't for oh, the dancing nice. itself, it was for the costumes, let's be real. <laughs> so. That's one thing and that you guys have a lot in common. Natalie changes gowns I think maybe 8 to 10, maybe 12 times in the show. Oh, uh, I I yeah. do have I hope you do too at this point, but I'm so lucky that my work wear is actually two full closets of gowns in my house because that's <laughs> what I get to get dressed up in to go to work. <laughs> so I'm with you on the, the sequins and rhinestones front for sure. Oh yeah, no, completely. I I still get extremely excited to put on a tutu and tiara. Like it's still a yes. wonderful moment. <laughs> so yes, I resonate. And yes, I do have actually in my house because you know, I also have a professional dance company. We have, I think, three closets that are fully devoted to dance costumes. It's ridiculous, but here we are. Um, yeah. You might not guess it, but I've actually worn a tutu one time what? also. Why? <laughs> I need the context. It happened once. <laughs> We were, it was actually in high school, believe it or not. I can't believe I did it, and I can't believe I'm still alive after doing it. It was in a, a show. It was like, you know, you know, our show choir was doing a Best of Broadway thing, and we did the number You Gotta Get a Gimmick from Gypsy, and it was the two women came out to do the first two, and I came out, and I was the ballerina butterfly you one. Were at the end. I was Tessie Tura. Yeah. Okay, so the only time that this gets weirder than this <laughs> is that Sean and I have once in our lives played the same role in a musical, oh, yeah, two different yeah. musicals. But we both two different productions, played, yeah. But we, two we both played this. That's right yeah. of the same musical in Nonsense. We both played Sister Mary Amnesia at two different times. He played it. I played it in Nonsense, and he played it in Nonsense. Amen. So we've actually shared. The three of us have all shared the experience of a tutu. <laughs> the two of us have actually experienced singing the same role on stage, which as a soprano and a baritone makes absolutely no sense. But we did it. We've done it. And I'm actually on the national cast recording of Nonsense Amen, which is also available on Spotify and, you know, out there but as Sister Amnesia on the recording. What? That is so cool. Oh, my word. Yeah. You too. I love it. Okay. So I just, I was really tickled when you were talking about, you know, the, the first time you met and it was like, well, here we are. We're going to get to know each other real fast. Was that ever? And I guess I'm just curious about this in general, you know, not as an actress. I Is that ever just super awkward and difficult when you have to kind of jump into those roles and you're like, well, <laughs> we're going to be up close and personal think- for a while. <laughs> It really, it really depends on the other actor. And I think, you know, for me, I feel really lucky from the moment I met Natalie, I knew that I was going to be friends with her, that was, that it was going to go beyond. I had not in my wildest imagination could have dreamt that we would be where we are today, but I knew that we were going to be friends and we were going to be in, in each other's lives for a while. So you get lucky. So you get lucky with that casting. You know, it's, it's all about the other person in that situation because it could have been a nightmare. <laughs> you know what I mean? It really could have been a nightmare from day one, but thankfully, you know, we really, we connected and, and, you know, it, it turned out to be the show itself was, it was an incredible show and we got to do some really wonderful moments together. We got to play the happiness of, of being a, a couple into the, the heartache of, you know, thinking you are pregnant and then finding out that you're not again, you know, those scenes were pretty powerful and to get to go through that together every, you know, eight times a week for however many weeks it was, I think that's something that, that bonded us also, you know. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I was just going to say that chemistry piece of it is one thing that you can't make up, right? It's genuinely liking someone and then getting to fall in love with them over and over again. It's really special. And I've, I've been lucky that I've never had a bad experience, but I've definitely had ones where you do sort of walk out and go, oh my gosh, I can do this eight times a week with this person and it will be just a joy every night. It's so easy. 
And when you meet Sean, everyone falls in love with Sean. There's just no person that's ever not immediately right. been <laughs> enamored with him. So I was very, very lucky on that front. But I think that it can be super awkward if you don't enjoy the person you're with. So I think that that was one of the things where because we both had been professional actors for a long time, we both knew that when we met, it was like, oh, this is different. Like, this is special. Thank yeah, goodness. This yeah. is going to be fun. <laughs> you know? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. And I can I can relate to that just on the dancer level of when you're doing partnering, it is so physically close. I mean, you're you're literally touching each other so that you can be supported in pretty cool ways in these different lifts and and all sorts of different things. And I I relate to the fact that sometimes I've worked with partners where it felt like a lot more work. I mean, I was also always lucky to have people who were awesome to work with, but yeah, when I met the the guy who is currently my dance partner was like a very similar experience of, oh, this is easy. And this is a lot of fun versus, you know, like feeling like it's more yeah, of a job. This is work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Totally. And so your tribute show, I'd, I'd love to delve into that a little bit more. I think that is such a cool thing that you guys have developed and, and obviously you've gotten to tour with it and do all sorts of wonderful things. How long of a process was that to sort of write the show and, you know, come up with all of the different components. I mean, I, I can only imagine from my production experience, but I feel like this is a whole nother level when you're doing something to be a tribute to people who, you know, came before you essentially. Yeah, absolutely. We sort of live, we sort of lived in their, in their music for a good period of time. Right. Natalie, like we listened to almost everything. Like we went through there, you know, as much as possible and really tried to, you know, look at every video we could find and read everything we could find. I mean, I, we, we fell in love with them, you know? And so, we, so then when we get to the point where we're creating the show, it really made us want to do them justice, you know? Natalie? Yeah. And knowing that they were such a special couple for those of you guys that don't know, Steve and Edie were, they worked together and they lived together and were married for 55 years. So, and they were on over 90 albums between the two of them, both together and separately. And they had hugely successful solo careers, but they also were one of the best known duos of the time and were friends with Frank Sinatra and toured with him and on the Carol Burnett show. People knew them from the Carol Burnett mm, show. Yeah. So I mean, they, they were left everywhere. such a legacy yeah. of music that it was really hard for us to whittle it down to just a 90 minute show. I mean, that was part of the hard part was going in and saying, but we love all of this stuff. How <laughs> do we try to make, you know, how do we try to do them justice and tell their story in a way that resonates with ours and also get to do this incredible music that spans so many decades, but still has a real through line of sophisticated pop music. That's really what they were known for. And so it, that was the easy part was being able to sit back and sort of go, oh, what's good? Well, everything's good. Now the hard part <laughs> is how do you pick what to, yeah. what to do? And so like Sean said, we really did live in their world for a long time. And, and touring with the show, one of the things that's been really great is that we've met a lot of people that were either related to or were friends with or worked with Steve and Edie along the way. Everyone from like roadies, we had a guy who told us that he was, he worked backstage and that Edie Gourmet would sit there at a table Pac-Man that she used to travel with, <laughs> like back when Game Boys, right, weren't a thing or you couldn't put an app on your phone. She used to have one of those full tabletop things that they, she would sit and she'd have her hair in curlers with like a martini in one hand and a cigarette <laughs> in the other playing this tabletop. And you can't find that, right, in an interview with Johnny Carson. You can only find that from people who knew them. So that's been really cool, too, to sort of live in that space and have people resonate with the show so much that we always try to do, you know, some kind of a talk back with the audience if we can after the show. And they've taught us just as much as we've entertained them. So that's been a really neat thing to to add to our repertoire along the way. It is. That's one of my favorite things about it is is getting to meet the audiences afterward and getting getting to meet the people who who did work with them or they they knew them and getting those stories like that story that Natalie just told. But like she said, not anything you would ever find on the internet. We would never know that if we didn't come across that person. And now that story is in the show. We tell that story in the show. So when people see the show, they're getting to hear 
you know, the things that they knew and loved and remember about Stephen Eadie, but also some of these more personal touches that were weaving into the story that we tell, you know, so it's, that's a really cool thing about it. And, you know, Steve, their, their story really is probably, I would venture to say, even to this day, one of the greatest Hollywood love stories there is. They met on the original Tonight Show, you know, way, way back in the day when they, they were very young. They were cast as singers side by side by side with Steve Allen. They met there. You know, they fell in love. They were together for over 55 years and they managed to stay married and work together <laughs> that closely for that long is, is really a re remarkable thing. Yeah. yeah. And what they did so beautifully too, was that on stage, they jabbed at each other, like only a married couple really can. And that's something that I think we're really lucky to be able to bring sort of that wit and humor into the show. Cause it keeps it alive and fresh for us, even after all these years. Because I think we might have a very similar dynamic <laughs> we do, we to do, what Steve and Edie had from seeing me on interviews and stuff, just as people. So that's been yeah. fun to recreate too. People, our audiences swear that we're married. I mean, they you know they can't believe it when we tell them. We don't really tell them in the show, but if pe people ask us afterwards, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that is so fun. I mean, but. Okay, so then to be compared to such an iconic couple and yeah, what a feat in general, let alone with the pressures of being super famous and having these amazing careers and things like that. So kudos to them. But was it ever incredibly intimidating at all to sort of think like, oh my goodness, people are comparing us to them. How do we do this justice? I, I would it's not really because we've never tried to impersonate them in any way. We really are going out there. We're singing in our own voices. We're talking as ourselves. We're not putting on their persona in any way. But we feel very good about the the way that we're honoring them and their careers and their lives and, and, and what we've put together and our audience, you know, based on what the audiences say, you know, we it's a it's a good we feel we feel good about where we are with it and how it all just sort of came together. It all full, sort of feels like it was meant to be for us. Maybe some might think a weird thing to say, but you know, the way our stories connected and how similar it is to their story. They met when they were cast on a show together, you know, so did we. And we are doing this because people told us, you know, when they saw us perform together, that we reminded them of them. And so it just feels like the universe has told us this is what we're supposed to be doing. You know? Yeah. The only time I can say I was intimidated was when we were doing our show, we sat down in Vegas for a while and we found out afterwards that Steve Lawrence's people had sent people to come see the show. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I talked to them on the phone afterwards and they, they loved the show. They thought it was great. I'm glad I didn't know they were in the audience the night they were there, mm. but knowing that they had like sent people to make sure that the show was, cause they'd heard, Oh, I mean, we had we had told We'd them we were out, coming yeah. and they had they'd come to sort of vet the show. And it was nice to hear that they they enjoyed the show. But that I'm glad I didn't know ahead of time. I would have been a ball of nerves if I had known that they were listening to me sing her iconic songs on stage. <laughs> Yeah, that makes complete sense to me. That is that is so cool. Definitely meant to be, it sounds like. And now I'm excited to hear that you guys are going to be able to go back to performing again. I know COVID sort of threw a curveball at, at many different people, especially performing artists. But tell me a little bit more about your show that you're doing now, these live productions that interview people and things like that. Sounds like an incredible way to bring, like you said, positivity to the world. So I'm just super curious how that came about and how that's going the funny thing is it came about so after like eight months about of not being together not singing mm -hmm. any of our tunes we we were both feeling good we got together we had maybe a bottle maybe a bottle and a half of wine and we <laughs> maybe. were like hey let's play <laughs> russian roulette with our songs and see what we remember and we decided to do it live on Facebook. I'm glad that we know each other well enough that we were okay if things didn't go well. Because <laughs> it was good. It was fun. It wasn't always good. I guess no. that's a better way yes, to say it. That's a perfect way of saying it. <laughs> but even when it, yeah, even when it wasn't, it was still fun. You know? So that's kind of how it all started. We enjoyed it. We had, you know, and we got great feedback from that. And that sort of pushed us in the direction of trying to do something on a more regular basis. And, and now we're sort of have delved into this world of podcasting and vi podcasting with video and um, really excited about the, about the direction, uh, the direction of it. And Sean and I had both expected along the way that we would be broadcast journalists. It's odd. That was where we kind yeah, of had yeah. both begun 
thinking our careers would end up. And it's fun to have brought it full circle where that's really sort of what all podcasters and video podcasters are doing now. And it's neat to come back to that sort of love of ours that we had to put aside while we were touring all over the place for the last umpteen years together. And we really are sort of modeling the show after sort so it is sort of modeled after that sort of live with Regis and I always say Regis, but I and, like the uh, Regis and Kathy Lee version. We can stick with that one. We can <laughs> okay. go old school. John, it's all right. All right. right. Yeah. <laughs> K- Kathy Lee would sing sometimes, but she would not have Regis sing with her. <laughs> no, that's for sure. I think she might have pushed him off the stage, but she would have had the bottle of wine. <laughs> So we sort of modeled it after that kind of feel. So it has a very fun, lighthearted, we wanted it to be very conversational. We didn't want it to be about any one particular topic so that we could have, you know, and it seems like, you know, even like how you're doing, you know, you have a variety of people in the arts, which is awesome. But yeah, we, so we, so like we, like Natalie said, we ha- next week are having a, a baker on the show. And then, you know, we, we're having some other podcasters on the show and we have had musicians and like Natalie said, pet uh, dog rescues that we've had. So open to just anything that would make anyone feel good or lift them up after, you know, a long day. Or a long year. <laughs> yeah, that seems to drag out. And <laughs> yes, that's fantastic. I'm so glad you guys are doing that. And so, and I'm sure I have more questions, but I'm sure that there are people who are super interested in following your journey and connecting with you and, and you know, getting to experience these live shows. Is there a way for people to find you and connect with you and, and support you? Absolutely. They Go sure for it, can. Yeah. They can find us on Facebook They can find us on YouTube and they can also find us on our website and you can always look us up as Cordone and Kilgore. So if you find us on Facebook, it's Cordone and Kilgore, Instagram, Cordone and Kilgore, YouTube, Cordone and Kilgore. And then on the web, it's Cordone and Kilgore dot com so super easy we are very unimaginative when it comes to naming things so you can just always find us as the be- it's just us that's what you know that's the beautiful thing it's just us. that's right yeah. all the time everywhere our show as of right now is streaming live uh, at 7 p.m eastern time 4 p.m pacific on most mondays and you can always find it after the fact on those channels as well Absolutely. And they are also posted to IGTV because we're not able to go live to Instagram. So they are edited and then posted to IGTV. And then again, you know, we take then the audio from it and then do an edit of that for audio podcasts that are currently available on Spotify um, and Stitcher. And then and again, hopefully we'll be expanding that audience pretty soon as well. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Well, that's that's very exciting. I am personally delighted to follow your journey and also to support this live show in particular, because that just sounds fantastic. I can't wait to to tune in, but yeah. So I'm, I'm just curious. I'm sure this has happened to you both on multiple occasions, but are there any stories that stand out to you where either somebody was experiencing art that you were creating or, you know, a show or something like that, or that you personally got to witness that was really impactful. It was kind of this, a moment to remember, like, I I need to file this away because this is really special. Yeah. From my own personal experience and watching someone else create that really moved me in a way that I'll never forget. I've seen so many shows, both my friends and other professionals work, but the one that hit me the strongest that I can sit here and put myself right back in the theater was I watched Audrey McDonald do 110 in the Shade And there is a song called Old Maid towards the end of the first act, I believe. And, and she ripped me to shreds. And I just remember, I'm I'm getting chills just thinking about it as I'm sitting here. And it was the way that she connected to the material that she was singing. And it was that she was, she's a brilliant vocalist, but she was really experiencing that the moment in a way that I could feel in my own body and my own soul, the way that she was experiencing that moment for that role. And I was sobbing in the audience and the audience was completely full. I had gone to theater by myself, which I do often. And I didn't know either of the people sitting next to me. And I know they thought I was nuts. I kept getting like those sideways glances. of (laughs) Why is this? Why are you crying? (laughs) Imagine how the whole entire audience wasn't sobbing. And it, for me, was one of those pinnacle moments of great art that 
I got to experience and is something that no one will ever get to do again if you weren't in that theater. And I think that's what I love so much about live performance is that it is temporal. And when it's done, it's done. And anytime I get to experience live performance, dance, uh, music, if it's being made in front of you, that's something that no one can take away from you, right? My house could burn to the ground. I could lose everything I have, but no one can take that experience from me. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that I love so much about art and about live performance. That's a great answer. I feel like that's like why we as artists and why everybody who loves art comes back to it because you're always, I don't know, it's sort of like when you have a moment like that, you want another one. So you seek mm-hmm. it out. And so you're, it's like trying to chase that high. For, right, yeah, you become an addict. Art addict, I love it. Yeah. And so that, but that was a great answer, I think. But and for me, I've had many impactful moments uh, with art. My most recent one, though, however, was getting to see uh, Bette Midler perform in Hello, Dolly. Uh, in, oh. in, in New York City, that, oh, that for was such me. A good one. Now uh, that I can tell you, I I sobbed not all the way through, but there were moments where I mean, I <laughs> and not for I because it was <laughs> it was just the most amazing. I don't know, and I'm getting chills thinking just thinking about it, talking about it because it was you felt like I don't I don't even know how I can't even put it in words. Uh, I'm at a loss for words trying to even explain what it, how it was. But well, I know that, that when they came out for put on your Sunday clothes, and I know we've talked about this when they did the parade of the costumes, yeah. it was like, it's what you wanted every musical to ever be in all the world. And I know I remember you talking about how she just touched you so much. And I, I can feel it listening to you talking about it. Yeah, yeah that's cool. That's cool. It's amazing. Yeah, and when like and after that iconic the, the iconic Hello Dolly number and just the roar of the you know in full Broadway theater and as everyone st- like stood up and I I swear it went on for like five minutes or more the the standing ovation like it was yeah I yeah I just love it I love yeah it's, that was awesome yeah of course that is so cool well yeah you both have incredible stories about art being impactful and i really like the the idea of the art addict <laughs> we might have to make a t-shirt <laughs> right yeah. thankfully it's the healthiest addiction you can probably have right yeah. <laughs> oh man i feel like that needs to be explored further we might you know that's it fantastic. might make you poor right it'll definitely get you high yeah. I love right. it. Oh, this is perfect i love uh. it oh my gosh And I totally resonate with what you were both talking about with live theater. I mean, I'm so grateful that there are so many avenues nowadays to view art virtually, whether it's a, you know, it's a musical or something else, but there's nothing that compares to live theater, even Mm -hmm. as a performer, I feel, you know, if you're taped, it's, it's nice. I mean, I'm glad to have that so I can go back and, and see it again, but there's nothing like that feeling of just being on stage and looking out into the audience and hopefully it's a super dark theater. So you don't see anyone's face, you know? (laughs) Oh, that's awesome. That's so exciting. So when's your first live performance back? We are so lucky that we will be performing at the grand Oshkosh in Oshkosh, Wisconsin coming on June the 11th. It's a Friday night and there will be a live broadcast of it as well that's completely free. So if this happens to air before June the 11th and anyone wants to watch it, if you go to, the, if you Google the Grand Oshkosh or watch any of our shows, we always try to put up a link for it. That night, you can watch the free live broadcast of the show along with the 50 or so people that are going to be allowed into the house that are going to be socially distanced in the balcony for the night. But we get to have our our three piece band with us. We're going to get to actually tour up there again, and it will be a really nice stream too. It's going to be a three camera shoot, and that's all thanks to I, I believe a sponsor, right, Natalie? Somebody, yes, that's a, correct. A, a, a corporate sponsor that's sponsoring the the stream, so that we can share the show with you know an even broader audience, which is awesome. Yeah, that is fantastic. You know, it's so interesting because. Again, in so many ways, artists have had to really switch gears or be a little bit differently innovative, I would say. I think in general, artists are very good at adapting. But I I do like the fact that it's kind of opened the world to some of our artistic endeavors that might not necessarily get to see. Like, I wouldn't necessarily get to see that show, but now I can. And that's that's really exciting, you know, just to have those opportunities. So, Yeah. Absolutely. There have been some crazy. I just finished a project where it was eight actors, 
all in different states, all working with green screens, and it was a, a sketch comedy show, and that would have never happened, you know, if if this didn't happen. So yeah, absolutely, there have been some some good, some really you know interesting and and cool things to come out of it for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Well. First of all, your stories are just so fantastic, and I literally have been sitting here smiling the whole time, so this has been fantastic and wonderful. And I do have three questions that I always like to ask my guests if you two would be up for that. Sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. So first of all, how do you personally define art, or what is art to you? Ooh. I feel like we should have studied. All right. So what is art to you? Apparently, we answered this earlier, and the answer is like a drug. I think art to me is self-expression in a way where you're attempting to communicate something that is incommunicable to another person. That's good. I think, I think for me, it's the opportunity to escape. Yeah, absolutely. And then what do you think is the most important role of an artist? To keep it alive, to keep it going. I think for me, it's to tell the truth. Ooh, that's good. Whatever your truth is in that moment, to be vulnerable enough to be honest in a way where you are sharing something real, sharing a piece of yourself with people that you might never meet or really get to know. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, and then my final question, and I'll define my terms a little bit, but do you think that art should be inclusive or exclusive? And what I mean by that is inclusive referring to artists who put their work out there and provide some context behind that, whether it's, you know, as simple as a title or whether it's show notes, whether it's the context behind it, the inspiration sort of that that prompted it versus exclusive referring to artists that put their work out there but don't provide the context and basically leave it solely up to the viewer to determine what they will. I, For me, I think inclusive because it should be also about the educational piece of it and to let young people growing up today know how it all works, you know, and hopefully to be able to inspire. Yeah, I think for me, it can be it can be valid in either direction. I think it's really up to the discretion of the artist as to what they want that experience to be for their viewer or their audience. I know for myself, I much prefer prefer to make what would be considered inclusive art. And I think for the most part, I prefer to be the viewer of it as well. But I think that both of them are valid. It just depends on what the project is. I, I think I know that wasn't really an answer, but I'm going to I'm going to pick <laughs> D all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> That's always the best. If it's an option, I'm right. going with it. I'm, right. I'm, yeah. Right. No, and and you're absolutely right. You're both right. I mean, there's value in both and and I think it's it's really interesting to hear the answers to that particular question because everyone has a different you know, opinion just like art is subjective. So is that question. I love it. Well, again, thank you guys so very much for being here today. I'm just so thrilled to hear your stories and I'm I'm very excited about what you guys are doing I I'm going to mark it in my calendar to catch that live stream because that's really exciting to me too and you know with your with your live shows that you're doing weekly I think I just know that what you bring to the world brings so much positivity and light and value and I just commend you two for doing that and for choosing to look on the bright side, choosing to highlight the good that's happening because that is so needed. And I just know that what you're doing is making a, a tangible difference in people's lives. And so I just want to commend you for that and thank you for that because, you know, it, it does take you time and effort and I appreciate it. So thank you. <laughs> that's, that's very nice, Lindsay. Thank you so much. This was really a lot of fun. I really, this yeah, thank great. you. And we hope that you will be a friend of our show. We would love to have you on as a guest, not yeah, to put you definitely. on the spot, but we would love to have you. And so hopefully we'll get a chance to collaborate again because your spirit is so open and kind and the work that you do here to, to gain the following of the people who rely on getting to hear you every week. We just, we're glad that we were able to share. Yeah, of course. And oh my gosh, yes, I would absolutely love to be a guest. That would be a yeah, huge sweet. honor. We'll, set it up. we'll cool. have our people call your people. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, thank you again so much. I'm I'm very much looking forward to that opportunity as well. But 
Also, thank you so much for everyone who has listened to this episode. And oh my goodness, if you're feeling as inspired as I am right now, I would just love if you would share this episode with a friend or two, and we will catch you next time. If you have a story to share with us, we would love that so much. And I hope your day has been artfully told.